and this one is very unusual to me i have not seen anything like this before this one looks like a soldering iron that plugs into an ac outlet and it has a knob here that you can uh, adjust this is the side view here and i'm holding the soldering iron at 45 degrees and look at this i can really see this being very handy i mean just imagine the tip is very hot In this video, we're going to be working on a Toshiba external hard drive that came in for data recovery. This is the one terabyte drive. And I already removed the drive from its enclosure right here. Customer said that he's not able to read files from the drive. Now, as soon as I plugged the drive to the computer, I felt heat on this side of the board. I labeled it with a mark here. What appears to be getting hot is this chip right here. Let's go under the microscope quick. It appears that by touching the board, this chip is getting hot. This is the controller chip. Uh, this is the firmware chip right here. So we know that the firmware of the hard drive is stored inside this chip and not part of the big IC here. I'm going to inspect the board under a thermal cam and pinpoint where heat is coming from. But I believe it's this controller chip here. Right now, I plug the board to a SATA adapter and we're going to plug it to the computer and we'll monitor the board to see where it's heating up from. Right here. Okay, I just plugged it in. And if we go to our thermal cam, okay, and look at this, just like I suspected, right there. This is the controller chip. The good thing is, over the years, we accumulated over seven, eight hundred different types of hard drives. So I have about twenty of those boxes that contains damaged drives. What I do with these is I use the circuit boards to data recover other hard drives. I had to leave this video for another day, for today. The reason is I had to look over all the hard drives that we had, all the salvage hard drives, and great news, I was able to find exactly the same board. This is the exact same board as the customer's drive. What we're going to do is transfer this board over to the customer's drive, but before we do so, we have to transfer the firmware chip from the customer's board onto this board. Otherwise, even if the board is an exact match, if the firmware chip does not match, then the hard drive will not work. Now, I do not know the condition of this board. Hopefully it's good. We do not know. If the board, for whatever reason, is not working, then I have to go online and look for a similar board if I can find one. And uh, we'll see, we'll see. What we're gonna do is remove the firmware from the customer's board and put it on the donor board, because if we do not do so, the drive is not going to get recognized by the computer. So let's go ahead and do it. A lot of people ask me, how can you do work on this microscope where I'm looking at the monitor and doing work with my hands on the board? A lot of people like to use stereo microscopes where they shove their eyes in the microscope and they do the work. It's easier, of course, because you can tell exactly where your hands are and how far you are from the board. But to me, I've gotten so used to doing this, it's like second nature to me. I mean, I mean, right now, look at this. I can grab this capacitor, I can grab this component, this component, this component, this component. I do not have any issues with grabbing components or telling how far my hand is from the board. A lot of people are not used to working by looking at the screen and doing work on the board. They cannot tell where their hand is or how far their hand is from the motherboard. But to me, I'm just used to it, and it's a lot more comfortable for me to lay back, sit down, lay back, and do work on a motherboard. I do not have to strain my back, I do not have to strain my neck, and it's just second nature to me. A lot of people may not be able to do this, or they're just used to using stereo microscope, but for everybody who asked in the comments, how come you use this microscope and not a stereo microscope, is because comfort, comfort, comfort. It's a lot more comfortable just laying back, and working on a motherboard. So let's go ahead and remove the firmware chip. I'm gonna apply about 410 degrees Celsius. 
we do not need to go higher on this type of board if the board had five six seven ten layers then of course we need more heat okay i just removed the chip and maybe i should have went under the microscope we're gonna do the same with the donor board i'm gonna remove the chip Okay, let's go ahead and put the firmware chip on the donor board. But before we do so, let me apply some solder. That's it. The job is done. All we have to do is clean up and test. So the chip is soldered on to the board and let's go ahead and try it. Let me plug it into this desktop that I'm currently working on. Maybe I should show you what's on the screen. I do not want to show you too much, but let me plug the drive in. Awesome. The drive is working and I'm able to see the files. Great. We're not going to send the customer the drive like this. We're going to back it up to another drive in case something goes wrong with the drive. And we're going to invoice and send this back to the customer. I want to go over one of the packages we received today and this one is a gift, a gift from Frank and the package is coming from Indiana. Let me go over what Frank wrote here. Dear Mr. Fixit, I am sending a gift which I feel you may need. I am in the electronics repair field. The tool is designed to preheat the underfill. It can be used to preheat the solder under VGA chips for easier removal of very large chips such as the A10 chip. I'm 72 years old and have been doing electronics repair for over 50 years. The only problems I have developed is unsteady hands. I've learned so many things from you. Thank you. Frank mailed three things here. Uh, this is a knife. This will come in very handy. I have a lot of them, but you can never have enough. And these are some BGA tips to go under BGA chips. And this one is very unusual to me. I have not seen anything like this before. This one looks like a soldering iron that plugs into an AC outlet. And it has a knob here that you can uh, adjust. I can really use any one of those tips that Frank sent. I have a lot of them here. We can just twist and remove this tip, change it to something else. And I can see this being very handy for removing underfill. The tip is angled 45 degrees about, so I can hold the soldering iron like this and the tip is flat down with the board let me show you how it looks like under the microscope this is the side view here and I'm holding the soldering iron at 45 degrees and look at this I can really see this being very handy I mean just imagine the tip is very hot we can adjust the temperature via this knob here I do not have time to try it right now, even though I'm very anxious to see how well this will do. But I will do a separate video on this. Maybe, maybe this is an answer to my prayers for making life easier when removing underfill or BGA chips. We'll see. Thank you very much, Frank. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the positive things that you wrote on this letter. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.